welcome back to my channel. Today I have my January Pan That Palette update and I'm really excited to bring you guys this, this video. I actually tried to film it earlier today and my camera battery died so I just went to the gym so hopefully I don't look like too much of a hot mess. I was just weightlifting and I didn't sweat too much on my face so hopefully it looks okay but I've been really excited to film this video. I've been thinking about it almost the whole month because I've just been loving this project so much. But before I get started I do want to keep my updates on the shorter side but since this is the first one and it's the first time I'm going to be sharing with you what I've been using the shades for and how it's been going and my thoughts on them. It's probably going to be a bit of a longer video. So if you're just interested in seeing my progress from the beginning of the year until now, I will put a timestamp in the description box down below so you can just click on that and it will take you straight to the end of the video where I will insert my um, progress photos. So if you just want to see my progress, you can click on that, but if you want to hear more about how it's been going, just stay tuned. So. If you didn't see my intro video, which I'll also have linked down below, did I say that already? I don't remember, but I have four different palettes. So I'm actually adding a fifth palette. I was kind of inspired by Paige from Cheap Thrills. She's kind of doing her Pan That palette in the same style where she just has a bunch of different eyeshadows that she's trying to work on this year. But she's calling it 17 in 2017. And so I counted up the shadows I was working on and I was a little short of 17, but she inspired me to add a few more that I'd been thinking about adding. Um, before I saw her update so kind of pushed me over the edge to say yeah I definitely want to add some more shadows so I'll link her project down below too if you're interested in seeing someone else who's kind of doing it the same way I am so like I said I have been loving this project so far I couldn't have set it up better but I really didn't do this int intentionally because unless I want to do an all matte look I really only have one lid shade in my project so that so every day I've been using at least two of my Pan That Palette palettes, but I've also been going into the rest of my collection using my singles, using my other palettes, and even though I've been kind of using the same kind of lid shade almost every day, the fact that I have the freedom to choose which palette I use or which formula and which brand, that's been enough to really keep me from feeling bored or restricted at all. And so I know I'll have even more freedom if I come up with more looks, but I've been kind of boring this month, um, but I've been going back, but I've been going back and forth between about three different looks. So I basically use all my palettes for kind of the base and then I just pick the lid color from other palettes. So the first, at the beginning of the month, I was really only reaching for kind of light champagne beige shimmery shades. So I was going for Urban Decay Sin, I was using Andromeda from my NARS palette, um, beige from the Lorac Pro 2, just like all those kinds of shades, like, you know, just like a light shimmery shade like this. And you'll hear more about this in my January haul and anti haul video, but I decided that I've been in kind of a rut. That's been my go-to look for, you know, years. I don't wear it every day, but it's always been my look when I don't know what else to do or I just want something really fast and easy and I don't want to think about it. But I took a little break from wearing makeup this past summer, and since I've been back into wearing makeup, I've been wearing that shade or that kind of look almost every day. I've been in a big rut, so sometimes when I'm filming I'll do something different, but if I'm not, that's almost always what I've been wearing. And it's been really nice because it's very versatile. I've been trying to pan some colored liners, and so it works really well with wearing a colored liner. Um, and then it's when it works well, I can wear any lip color basically with it, but I kind of wanted to pull myself out of that rut. Not because I was sick of the look, but just because I knew that I should and I wanted to play with some other things. So I kind of became obsessed with this medium kind of taupey shimmery lid shade and I picked one up in my January haul which you'll see but I've either been wearing the light shimmery shade or the medium brown <laughs> shimmery shade almost every day unless I'm wearing the purple and the Tarte Rainforest After Dark palette. So those are the three looks I've really been going between. I do want to be a little bit more creative, but in this month that's what I've been doing. So I'm going to go through palette by palette and share with you my progress and, you know, kind of my thoughts. So I now have 17 eyeshadows total. So I will share with you at the end what the new palette is and what the shades in that palette are. I don't, I didn't take comparison photos for that palette just because 
I didn't really officially decide to add it until I had already I'd already been using it a lot and um, was kind of toying with the idea of adding it and then by the time I decided to add it I'd you know already made some pretty good dips so I decided you know I didn't even think about taking a photo until I realized I was gonna film this video and I didn't have anything to compare it to so we'll get to that later though so I'm gonna go kind of in the order of least used to most used. So my least used palette has definitely been my Tarte Rainforest After Dark palette. That is no surprise. I definitely could have predicted that. Um, if there's any eyeshadows in my whole project, including the ones I just added that I don't reach my goals on, I would bet it would be these two. So the eyeshadows I'm working on are this light purple and the plum. They probably look exactly the same. There's not really a dip going at all. I probably only reached for this maybe three days out of the month. Um, I've been using the bronzer almost exclusively, but for eyeshadow, it's been really hard for me to talk myself into grabbing for this um, because I feel like in my head I'm like, oh, I don't want to wear like a purple look today or like a colorful look. But on the lids, like this really doesn't come across as colorful. It really comes across as very, very neutral. So I've been wearing this light shade on my lid and then I use this on the outer third maybe of the lid and kind of blend it out in the crease. And even in the swatches they look pretty purple, but on the eye it's not like super purple. It looks very, very neutral if that makes sense. So I'm definitely going to have to get better at reaching for this if I want to make progress because the eyeshadow is very hard, it's very packed in there, it's very stiff and I feel like it's going to take a lot of work to see any progress. So my goal is to use up the light shade and just hit pan on the darker shade. So we'll see if that happens. <laughs> my second probably least used palette I would say is the Lorac Pro just because the shades that I have left in here are a little bit harder to work with. So I have four shades left. There are five in there now which we'll, we'll talk about for sure. But Mauve I've been using in the crease. It goes really well when I use the Tarte shades and it also works really well with the kind of that medium brown shade um, I've been wearing because it really doesn't come across as super pink or super purple I think in the crease. Um, I mean it does look like that in a swatch but it's it's very, not super different than... I don't find that it's super noticeably different than using kind of a light brown in my crease. So. I've been using that a lot more. I want to remember to try to wear it as blush more often. I don't like it on its own as blush. I usually top, I usually top it with this cool pink shade from NARS and I like how that turns out better on my skin tone. But I just never think to use this as blush. Um, for espresso, I haven't been loving espresso. I've been using it kind of on the outer V and to like deepen up the crease a little bit, but I just find it's really hard to blend. There have been a few days where I've used a similar shade in my Stila palette instead of this one and it always just blends a lot easier and makes me not want to use this one. I do want to kind of experiment with more like daytime appropriate smoky eye looks which I think I could probably use espresso for. I did that actually um, in December one day. I used this all over the lid and it was a little patchy so I added a shimmery brown on top of it and it turned out really well but I just haven't been in the mood to do that recently I guess. So this one in Garnet is the new shade I'll talk about in a second. Deep Purple is almost gone. I don't know if you can tell. I think at the beginning of the year there was about this much in the top corner and then a much bigger chunk in this bottom corner. And as predicted it's been going pretty quickly. I've only been using it to set this purple liner I have in my Project 10 pan. Whenever I put my brush in there it just gets really crumbly and it just falls apart. So I really think I only have like one or two more uses out of it. I would guess one because I, I bet that the next time I put a brush in there it just falls apart. So Slate is the, the shade in this palette that has been giving me the most trouble I guess. In my intro I said my plan was to just wear it on my lower lash line. I was gonna do that every day and just kind of hope that it would use up the whole shade. But I tried it twice and I hated it both times. So I thought back to 2015 when I was originally panning this palette and I hit pan and slate and I did it by layering it with other shades in this palette that I didn't like. So I layered it with gold which was a real orangey gold. I later layered it with garnet which I did like but it looked nice with slate and then also light pink. So I was kind of feeling really discouraged like I guess I'm gonna have to figure out what I could layer with it. It's gonna be like this whole process like I just wasn't motivated to do it so I just was ignoring it most of the month. 
But one day, about halfway through the month I would say, I don't really know what came over me. I came home from work, I hadn't really been thinking about it. I sat down, I guess I probably had it out or something, and like within 10 minutes I was mixing it up with another shade and repressing it in this pan. It just kind of was a spontaneous idea I had and I just did it right away. So. I decided I wanted to mix it with something else, so what I did is I swatched it, um, maybe I think I did like six swatches on my the back of my hand, and then I went through some of my other shadows and swatched them on top to layer them and see if I liked the result. So there were two that I found that I really liked the result, and so I picked one, and I took like, there was the top part, so about, I guess about half of what was left of slate, although I think there's a little bit more in the bottom part, and I mixed it up and added it to that one and pressed it here. So let me do a little swatch of that. So that's what it looks like. I don't think you can really tell in the pan because you can still kind of see the two colors, but it's kind of a nice bronzy shade. Um, I posted a photo of this on Instagram and Amber F said it looked like satin taupe and it definitely looks kind of similar but it is a little darker so I have satin taupe here because I actually am going to talk about that too later but um, there's satin taupe so it's a little bit darker and a little bit more of a bronzy shade than satin taupe but I've really been liking it a lot. So Satin Taupe is one of those kind of medium brown shades I've fallen in love with this month. So I've been wearing this. I have um, the new one I picked up from Urban Decay that's kind of similar. I'll just swatch that now too. So they're all a little bit different, but on the eye they kind of give the same effect. So I definitely don't need all of these, but um, those are the ones that I've been going for. Plus another one I'll get to in a minute. So this is made up of Slate and Mocha from the Varrock Pro 2. So I've been calling it Sloka. Um, so it's a repressed here, so I'm not really sure. I'm not counting this as its own shadow in this, the 17 shadows, but um, I'm not really sure what my plan is um, for the rest of Slate. I might mix it with more Mocha and do the same thing. Or the other one I liked the result of was mixing it with Rosé from the Lorac Pro 2. It was kind of a lighter, kind of maybe similar to light browns in the Lorac Pro original. So I might do that for the rest of Slate. Maybe I should do that soon so I just mix it up and have that done with or maybe I'll wait until I use this one up. I'm not really sure but that's how the Lorac Pro has been going. So next I have my Stila in the No palette and I use this one pretty much every single day. So the shades I'm working on in here are Air, Wind, Desert, Clay, and Rain. I have been using Driftwood a little bit too. I use these two instead of Espresso sometimes because I just haven't been loving Espresso. I haven't been using Air or Wind because they're really similar to the shades I have in this one. But I have been using Desert or Clay as a transition and crease shade every single day. So Desert is more of a warm peachy shade and Clay is a little bit cooler so I just kind of go with whatever I want for those. And then I'll deepen the crease and the outer V with one of these and then these I'm just kind of saving. So the pan on Desert is definitely bigger. There's like there's like maybe a little dip in clay, but I feel like it's these are going to go pretty slowly for me because you can barely tell that I've ever used it. And I've used this a lot the last past year um, and it looks almost completely full. Like there's the biggest dip other than desert is probably in wind and I haven't touched that all month. So then I have my Urban Decay Pulp Fiction palette. I definitely think I've seen the most progress in this one because I use it every single day. So here is what it looks like. So Righteous I used to set my primer every single day and then if I do want to use do a matte look I put this one on the crease as well. Then I use Anger every day as my brow bone highlight and sometimes as an inner corner highlight. This is white but it's kind of a more sheer white like compared to Snow and the Lark Pro 2 it's just like too pigmented to use on my brow bone. So I really like it because it's just like the perfect sheer shimmery shade for your brow bone. And then Furious I use every time I do black eyeliner. I set it with Furious. So the pans on these are definitely a lot bigger. Um, this part of area down here is definitely flatter. The corners on Righteous are still really high, like the bottom two corners are like all the way to the top. But I still feel like this one will go pretty quickly. I would guess by the end of March this will be gone. I could be totally off, but 
that's kind of what I think. This is like the biggest pan of eyeshadow I've ever tried to use up. It's 1.8 grams, so I don't really have a good gauge. And then Furious, definitely I can see the progress. I don't know if it's going to come across on camera, but this corner on the top was like basically flat and all the way to the top. There was really just that liner hole, but I've been using mostly putting my brush in this corner so there's definitely a dip going there and I've also been kind of rubbing it along the, the sides where they touch so I can definitely see a difference in the black shade even though you might not be able to see it. So I had some suggestions. Um, someone suggested that I cut this with like a knife and separate them and press them in different pans which I think is a really great idea but part of me is just curious to see what will happen if I just try to pan this. I don't think I've ever seen anyone pan a split pan of eyeshadow and especially not one where the shades are so different. Like these are as different as you can be, black and white. So I kind of think it would just be interesting to see what happens if I just try to use them up naturally. So I'm probably going to wait a while. And to be honest, like if this breaks and I lose a bunch of product, I won't be upset at all because it's white and black. I have a white and black in so many of my other palettes. I won't be upset if I don't get to use every last drop. So I kind of just want to see what happens, but we'll see if I change my mind. Alright, so the third palette I am adding into this project is the Lorac Pro 2. And I've been thinking about this palette a lot recently. Um, like I said, I kind of became obsessed with wanting some cooler lid shades for my eye. And, you know, when this came out, everyone was saying it's a cooler version of the Lorac Pro. And looking at it, I've realized now it's really not. Um, there's not a ton of cool shades in here. So, um... I've just kind of realized I don't like this so I've been reaching for it a lot for the beige shade and I just noticed it's so powdery it's so messy it got a lot of fallout when I use it and since I was like using this and then using Urban Decay Sin the next day and something else the next day it really stuck out how different the formula is on these when I first got the Lorac Pro it was my favorite formula I loved it, it they're so easy to blend they're super like soft but I feel like now I don't like that as much. So I've just realized I really don't like this palette and I want to make as much progress as I can on it and then just get rid of the rest. So that was kind of what inspired me to add these shades. So as you can see, I used all of this is from uh, adding it to Slate. So that's what I've done with Mocha. Then the two shades in here that I've been going back and forth between for the lid have been Beige and Chrome. So chrome is also really similar to these other shades I was talking about. So I don't know if it's going to come across on camera, but they all look different, like swatched out. They all kind of have different undertones and stuff, like slight differences. My favorite of the four is definitely my nude one, Bust, which I got um, this month. But on the eye, the difference is pretty minute. So I just want to kind of go through the other ones so I don't have so many dupes in my collection. And since I know these are really easy to use up, I decided to go for this one first. So I hit pan on beige this month. Um, there was a dip in it, but I, I hit pan on it a couple days ago. And then I've really made this dip in chrome all this month. Before that, there really wasn't much visible progress. Like you could tell I'd used it, but it probably looked similar to rosé. So I'm going to add three shades from this palette to have a total of 17. So I'm adding beige and chrome, but I haven't decided on the third one. Um, rosé I like on the lid. I did that one day this month, but I'm also thinking maybe I should do mocha because I'm kind of using it with slate. So I'm just going to kind of wait and see what happens, what I tend to gravitate towards more. Um, or maybe I'd, I'll just have 18 in my project. I don't know, but um, I'm kind of leaning towards rosé as a lid shade, so I have a few more options. So that is my fifth palette. I know I'm crazy having so many palettes, but I've been loving the way this is turning out. If I hadn't done it this way, I don't think I would have, like, sanity-wise been able to handle painting a palette this year. Um, I, you know, I might go back to that someday, like, using up an entire palette, but this, for me right now, is, like, the perfect way to do it. So I'm really, really liking it. 
let me know if you're doing something like this. If I haven't seen your Pan That Palette videos yet, I would love to follow along. I did recently like subscribe to a bunch of people that said they were doing this for the first time, so I probably didn't comment. It. I might have watched your video, but I'm, I don't know if I was commenting. I'm trying to get better at commenting, so if I not, if you don't think I'm following you, let me know, because I love watching Pan That Palette videos. Um, and otherwise, I will have my progress photos up next, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!